Hello, everyone, and welcome to Smashbox TV. Terry Miller, the disc golf guy, alongside Johnny V. And Johnny, I broke out of work for this. <laughs> well, there's <laughs> this gonna is be, important. This is this important that important. We have never before done this. We are here on a uh, Friday afternoon. A few moments ago, Paige Pierce had announced or let us know that she was in fact moved on and has a new sponsor. As I'm adjusting some audio here, I apologize. <laughs> She has a new sponsor. She announced it today, and this is such big news that we wanted to come in. We talked with Paige, and she said that she'd be willing to join us to give some more details. A lot of people are asking. There's a lot of excitement. There's probably a little bit of disappointment out there and everything in between, so we're going to do our best to connect with Paige here. Ask, and Ask all the questions we can. We're no holds barred interview. Yeah, we want her to... Uh, be able to give everything that has been asked of her over the last few weeks, few months, and even in the last few hours. Paige was very gracious to say that she wanted to uh, step inside the smash box with us to do this exclusive Friday afternoon interview. So uh, I think without further ado, we can welcome in the five-time women's world champion, Paige Pierce. Hello. Hey, Paige. Busy day for you, huh? Yeah, quite a bit busy over here it's been busy for a few weeks though and definitely the last four days i've been here in michigan trying to get everything aligned and ready for the announcement schedule yeah is this crazy <laughs> is this as far north as you've ever been this late in the year <laughs> uh, uh. no because i mean croatia yeah you, you know you've been overseas to to some yeah. pretty cold places in the off season yeah it's actually not nearly as cold here as I thought it was going to be either. So today pushing somewhere in the probably mid thirties, maybe or forties, possibly. Uh, yeah, like I mean, 40s. I haven't been outside at all, which is a very sad day for me, but surrounded by plastic and uh, exciting news. So awesome. Well, we're going to get right to it. I, this is always very delicate. And so I'm going to throw out uh, kind of an off the cuff, almost rehearsed, but not quite dis disclaimer first. We are always uniquely challenged here at Smashbox, not only with sometimes with technology and streaming, but we consider you a friend. I, I think you consider us the same. Uh, I, I have watched you grow as a person and as a player. I, I think I've been literally at your final putt for every world championship title you've ever claimed in the five years. But at the same time, we wear this hat of being journalist, or some, some call us <laughs> quasi-journalist. I'll go with the latter. <laughs> And so anytime we have, I'll say, really significant and important conversations, there's always this fine line of friendship, of journalism, and everything else in between. So for everyone out there that's wondering where it will go, I'd like to say I, I feel like we're going to do our best to wear both of those hats. Of course, we're concerned about Paige, her future, her career, you know, her new beginnings and all that stuff. But there's also some serious questions that a lot of the disc golf community are asking some of which we already know those answers to, but some people want to hear the specifics or as much information from you yourself coming from your own, you know, in your own words. So I wanted to throw out that, call it a disclaimer, whatever you want to call it, because uh, we're, we're frequently accused of either being too buddy-buddy or, or only going too hard on certain people. And as best as we can, we're going to try and give you guys a little bit of everything. Is that, is that a fair way to put it for you, for you Paige? Yeah, totally. I mean, I think board? that you don't want to hang up. <laughs> she just stands you, up and walks away. You know, if you've ever seen me on Smashbox, you know, it's uh, always goes a little deeper than I think friendship. You guys are, uh, you know, a news source in the disc golf world and you always ask the tough questions and I respect that. I kind of hold myself to that too. Like whatever I'm thinking I say and I respect that about you and you know I wouldn't be on here if I didn't think you were going to ask those questions there's a lot of things that you know people are talking about that this seems like a good place to do it in a friendly manner but also uh you know I know that you guys are going to get to the point so all right well let's let's get to that point that point being let's just backtrack four or five days ago you released on Monday that you were in your terms, stepping away from Dynamic Discs, uh, a, a place that you went to uh, three years ago in the beginning, I believe, of 2017, 
and it was a returning of sorts because you've been sponsored before they were producing plastic. Let's let's just start right there. You stepping away, using the words that you did in that interview, you were very much, some words were very harped upon in terms of things like loyalty and in, in terms of contract. So let, let's yeah. start on the contract side of things to just clarify everything out there. What were your terms and agreements when you, when you made that transition from Prodigy back to uh, Dynamic Disc or over to Dynamic Disc? Yeah, I mean, well, right off the bat, the word contract, we can kind of throw that out the window. There was no contract ever. Um, there was an agreement for sure, but it was verbal. Um, I never signed my name to any piece of paper in the entire time I was on dynamic discs. So um, I did break an agreement, a verbal agreement, but there was n nothing um, that would make it like Legal. legally binding or anything like that. And, uh, you know, it's kind of beautiful in a way that, you know, there's that aspect where we are going to work together obviously very closely um they put me up on a billboard you know like it was a it was a big deal it wasn't just this trial period thing it was you know a big deal but they it also lacked some professionalism in that sense that there was no contract and uh you know if if you're gonna go that far as to as to put someone on a billboard like you would think that there would be so and needless to say there there wasn't a contract um a written document so i guess that's like the first and biggest thing that you know any negative thing i'm hearing besides if it's about my gums or my ears is uh <laughs> so silly that that's like a topic mm -hmm. obviously anyway yeah. um but, you know, the only real negative thing I'm hearing is about the contract. So it's, uh, yeah, definitely something I wanted to address right away. And I'm glad that was even your first question, because it seems to be a real um, disappointment to a lot of people. And that's that's kind of sad because uh, that's not even the case exactly. So, well, it, well, uh, well, real quick, to, to, I mean, not to harp on that, but was that decision was that your decision to not have a contract? Was that their decision? Or was that a mutual kind of a, was that a mutual decision after you coming out of the prodigy contract? No, no, no. They just don't have contracts or they didn't. Now I hear that they do and they're signing documents. So this is great news, I think, for all future players. Um, but yeah, they just they don't have written documents or didn't at the time um, in any of their business deals. So so on that point i i keep saying that i feel like that's of yesteryear or yester decade you know there was always rumors of ken climo and some of our best players in the world 20 and 30 years ago having handshake agreements with most of our manufacturers why do you feel and, and that's this isn't specific to just disc, uh to dynamic disc sorry why do you feel that written contracts haven't been a thing maybe for them or anyone else that doesn't have them because you did have um, one with Prodigy. Yes. So, I mean, this, I was with Discraft first. They were my first manufacturer sponsor, and I did not have one back in mm -hmm. 2011 uh, or 2010 when I first got on Team Discraft. There was no written document. Um, but then when I went to Prodigy, there was a written document. And that was the first time that I had ever signed my name to any document. And as a 19 year old, um, yeah, it was, it was very overwhelming for me and really, really um, added to the uh, legitimacy of it. You know, when they offer me a part of the company and a shareholder and are having me, you know, sign my name to this piece of paper, like 12 different pages, uh, it was it was definitely something that uh, threw me off guard. Um, and then going into Dynamic, they didn't have that. So... Yeah, I think it's different by every company, um, and it's something that's not universal across the board. Now, as you transition from then being with Prodigy for how many total years? Prodigy? Yeah, you were. Um, 2000, the end of 2013, or I'm sorry, beginning. the beginning of 2013 is when they formed as a company, 
and I was like from day one. And then Two thousand fifteen was Pittsburgh, yes. Two thousand sixteen was World Worlds was in the road for so many years, right? Yeah, yeah, no. So I I guess what I'm really getting at is um it, it seemed a little bit volatile, tumultuous. Um, you know, there were there were rumors and stories going around as you were getting out of or attempting to leave your your position with Prodigy and get to dynamic disc you you had a lot of friends there uh you still have a lot of friends there what were some of the things that made that transition transition or change from prodigy to get you to dynamic disc how how was that process how did that process unfold to bring you in, back into that family yeah that's uh, something i haven't talked about in, in quite a while um I mean, how deep is this? Do you want me to get into? You, I guess you share it, what you it's, will. It's totally your interview at this point. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That was that was uh one of the roughest years of my life. I would say, uh, especially like when I'm doing what I love to be doing, and at that point, it was there was no fun in it. It was all drama, and this it, it just wasn't a good situation, and um. I, yeah, I was unhappy in my contract and more so a lot of false promises, you know, things that they said that they were going to do or hoped to do or wanted to do. And it was just like making it look so good, you know, like icing this cake 20 times and, uh, you know, paying all these pretty pictures and then none of them came true. And, and so I started to ask questions and being more and more uh, curious and asking questions and um, just finding out that those were all just kind of things that they said to entice us. And again, like being so young and having to sign my first document, I was just, uh, you know, I hear the word part owner and I'm like, you know, maybe this is this is the best thing for my future. And, and for, you know, what about when I can't play at the top level anymore. I should think about my future because I want disc golf to be in my life no matter what. So, you know, those things uh, encouraged me to do the deal. And then once we, once, you know, I saw the light, I uh, realized I, I had just been pretty naive and, and we just didn't really get along. And, uh, but I was part owner and I was shareholder. And so I decided you know, let's go to a meeting. Let's have a big meeting. I'm going to be completely honest. Here's all my frustrations. What are all your frustrations? How can we make this partnership better? And um, we agreed to work on this over the next year. And I believe that was that was right after Pittsburgh. So 2015, um, at the end of the year, we had this meeting and we laid it all on the table. And I said, you know, I'm willing to sign another one year deal where we work on your frustrations and my frustrations and we see if we can work this out. And uh, they were like, OK, let's do that. Sounds good. Like, let's continue to be open and honest. And I was like, OK, this might be this might be a turning point. Maybe all I needed to do was just um, communicate. And. Uh, this was at, I remember this was at a Mexican restaurant. We were just on a lunch break and it was like a three hour lunch break with all, all the stuff we talked about, but we were eating at a Mexican restaurant for lunch. And so it was pretty an informal conversation, even though we were covering some heavy things. And, uh, the next morning when I went back into the prodigy warehouse, um, they had drafted up a document and I signed it. And <laughs> I still to this day don't know if it was on purpose or an accident. I don't care really. Um, but the document said two years. And even though the afternoon before we agreed to do one year trial, basically. And uh, so when that year was over, I told them I was leaving. And uh, they said, no, you're not. And it got pretty ugly pretty quick. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's my fault. I didn't read the document. So 
yeah, learning so, lesson. And, and, uh, you know, then I found dynamic disc again or not found, but, you know, um, like you said, I was with dynamic before, but they were just an apparel company and they dyed discs and, um, I knew Rusco really well. And, and, uh, you know, he was always at the tournaments in Texas that I would go to. And he was always giving me a disc or two. And my dad always talked to him about, Hey, get my daughter on the team, get my daughter on the team. She's going to be good. And, and, uh, you know, so it was just a familiar face. And also Eric McCabe was heavily involved and he is probably the biggest, um, influence in my disc golf life. You know, he's the whole reason that I even ever went on the road. And obviously, like I said in my video, I, I, I haven't looked back since, you know, this was just, he invited me on the tour for, for a summer, you know, this was after a semester of community college and summer time was here. And it was in my mind, just like a two month fun, fun thing where I was going to check out the disc golf world. And, you know, he made such a big, big impact that I didn't ever stop. So, you know, when I got the offer from dynamic and, uh, you know, I was so familiar with them. It just seemed like a no brainer. So your, 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 your final year of prodigy was clearly, you said one of the worst years of your life. You, you, you were seen, I, I would say towards the end of that year, already throwing dynamic disc discs. You were, you were already prepping for the upcoming year. The next year you move over to dynamic. Things are clearly much better for a couple of years. Last year you move on and say, with, with our verbal agreement, you say, well, I'm going to sign on for three more years or sign. That's I'm going to agree to three more years. It's, it's hard. Sorry. The terminology uh, I'm going to agree to for three more years. And now this year you, you were clearly, there was something either some sort of frustrations or just, uh, an opportunity at discraft for a, uh, maybe to what you see as further your career or your brand or something along those lines is that pretty safe to say um yeah there's definitely definitely that's parts of it for sure but it, it's so much more than that so um yeah i mean yeah so well let, let, let me let me ask this question uh, uh we'll say specifically let's start with the first one which is when you, you, I think one of the phrases or terminology you use is there, they see your vision. Mm -hmm. Ex expand on that. What does that mean to you personally when you say you feel like right now Discraft can either see or help create or further your vision of moving forward? What are, what are some specifics that you feel like you can share when you say things like your vision? Right. And honest, I want to be completely honest with you guys. I'm going to be as open as humanly possible. Um, but some of the stuff I just don't want to announce yet because we have marketing plans of how we're going to announce it, you know? So, um, you guys will find out at literally everything you want to know <laughs> in just in due time. Um, but so, I mean, as for, the vision thing, stuff that I can elaborate on. I mean, you, you saw the website this morning, right? I mean, they built that for me with me. And so I say, you know, I've been on the phone with them and emailing with them nonstop. And it's just like, Hey, I want this on there. I want, can we do this colors? Can we have this stamp? Can I want you to do this? And, and not only is it like, okay, go for it. It's, Hey, we want to help you. And we see the value in this. And so we want to help you and we want, and this was one of the big asks from me is that I want a website. I don't want to sell stuff on Instagram. I don't want to be on my phone all the time. Can we set something up that manages itself after we put in all this hardware right away, it'll manage itself. And they said, Oh, absolutely. We were already thinking that. And we don't want you doing that either. We want you to focus on your play. So we'll even fulfill the orders for you. We'll manage the site. We'll do everything. And, um, that's, that's just so huge. They're not only like helping me and supporting me and trusting me, but they are giving me this platform where I can better myself on my craft, you know, and, and shaping shots and, 
getting better as a player, they're taking all the other elements that go in with being a professional disc golfer and helping me with that. Would you say that you weren't granted those things? Is that something that was missing at whether it's Prodigy and or uh, over at uh, Dynamic Discs? Is those opportunities just weren't available? Did you ask about them? Was it something you pursued or pushed for? Or did you not ask about it? No, I, I had been asking. It, it's, I truly love everybody at Dynamic Disc. So it's like, I don't want to make them look bad because mm -hmm. they're not. It's not, you're bad, you're good. It's more the abil ability and the... The turnaround time, you know, with having the discs right here, we are literally creating this disc 15 minutes later, it's coming off the machines. I'm, I'm like, okay, that needs more glide. He's tweaked some things. Next thing you know, 15 minutes later, we got another new ver variation where working with dynamic, it's, I don't really have that input and they don't even necessarily have as much input because someone else is making their discs. And then, you know, once they get them, it's weeks on the containers. And, you know, it's just, uh, it's so much more intimate of a process here. And, uh, you know, that's what I mean when I'm saying things like the sky's the limit and literally any and everything that we want to try, we can do and we can do it fast and just very efficiently. Uh, I, what I was going to follow that up with is, it's fair to say, Johnny and I especially have been around long enough, it's fair to say that there almost felt a little bit of a stagnant nature in Discraft, maybe for a number of years. Now, they, of course, some of their front office may argue that, and I, I consider a lot of them good friends and people I've worked with as well, but somewhat stagnant until last year. Last year was the big move when we saw Paul. Before that, we saw uh, Valerie Jenkins, uh, you know, gain her spot on the team. But Paul being obviously that really large scale move. And now it feels like the momentum is obviously shifting. There's a lot more Discraft conversation going on. Maybe compare or contrast a little bit because when people have thought about where growth and and presence, social media and otherwise, a lot of people initially say will will belt out dynamic discs. They their their marketing has worked so hard and has been so successful for many years. And now it feels like Discraft, fair or not, is is starting to play catch up starting last year. I feel like with Paul, obviously a lot of other good players and now yourself. And some of the new hires yeah. that Discraft has brought in as far as on their marketing team and their playing their their players, their captain, all that stuff. So I, I even compare yourself to maybe 2010 or 2011, where you were then versus how we see Discraft today. Well, so for starters, um, the company changed owners pretty recently. Jim Kenner, who is the founder of Discraft, he's no longer uh, the acting owner. So he gave the company to his nephew, Mike Wagner, who's been with the company for, I don't actually know how many years, but Quite a few. <laughs> uh, Terry and I can, can vouch for that a long time. <laughs> long time. Yeah. I can probably go get him if you want to sub interview with him, but he, um, when he started being able to make all the decisions, he said, okay, we need to restructure things. The things that are super important in his mind were different than in Jim's mind. And it was successful in both senses, but it's just a change of strategy, you know, and, you know, they've always been a great company. They just maybe didn't put as much weight on the players. And now they realize like that's where disc golf is and they're willing to adapt to the current, you know, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but the climate. Basically, they yeah. just want to keep evolving as the disc golf world evolves. And so I think it also helps to have someone that's more involved and is, you know, a little bit younger and knows kind of how disc golf's trending and all these things. 
So coming, well, so someone oh. that's been in the company for so long knows everything. He was out there, you know, he's he does so much. He was out there like making the discs, and and uh, you know, I'm like, man, the owner of a company is usually like just like making the business moves, but like you're involved in everything around here. So it's really cool to see like how everyone is helping everyone. And, uh, you know, I just, I definitely learned that just being here for the past four days, like, you know, everyone's running around trying to help everyone trying to get all the pieces in the right, in the right order. So, so let's, you are, let, let, let's quickly I talk about for one second. Yeah, Actually, of course. I said your name. This is Mike. He's leaving for the day. Hi, I'm leaving for the day. So. Also, I told him he's got to wear some Paige Pierce hats half the time uh, now, that's, right? That's a, 75 percent of the time, I'm, Mike. Get it, get it together. <laughs> you get the first pro, and I'll wear that <laughs> religiously. So, awesome. and this is his cute dog, Coop. Come here, Coop. Uh, Coop come here. Just for a second. Come yes, say hi. Very dog friendly. I've been over there myself. Very uh, dog friendly over at the warehouse. <laughs> we, we've spent a few nights with Mike at uh, the memorial having some fun a long time ago, so we're very familiar. He's a great guy. <laughs> All right. Thanks All right, for well, Thank you for everything you're doing, Mike. We yep. uh the the entire disc golf community appreciates it. Thank you. I'm excited about this. So we definitely are. Awesome. Thank you very much. So, so I was going to say so let's talk about you coming into Discraft. You're I, you're a much different player than you were when you signed your contract with prodigy coming into discraft do you have a ink on paper contract with them absolutely the, okay. yes and did you what with contracts comes a lot of legalese and stuff did you have anybody look it over a manager a lawyer your your, your dad anybody particular or was that just yes okay yes right yes this is quite a bit more um formal of a yeah 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 and in in my mind it's my last sponsor move so i wanted to make sure to down to every comma and period that everything was uh you know because i don't understand the legal jargon you know so it's more so like understanding what all these things are and you know the the thing that i'm talking about with prodigy you know that kind of prepared me for the rest of my future and i won't make that mistake again um so even though i understand verbally what we've talked about in all of our meetings i still want to make sure that i'm actually reading this document before i sign it and you know let's talk a little bit about contract details do you have a spit right now you just said this is hopefully your last sponsor move, but what does the contract say? Is there a year on there? A number of years? Four, four years. Four year deal. So similar, similar in time to what Paul had signed. I believe so, but I'm not, I'm not sure on Paul's contract specifics, okay. but I think, I think it was four years, right? I believe he did sign for four years. So let's talk a little bit about specifics. If you can get into that, that's a lot of what, you know, Paul was very open with his contract when, when he signed it. Let everybody know what he was getting. Let, if, if you don't mind, I'll at least ask the question. I've seen rumors out on the internet. I've seen up to $20,000 a month. Is that, is that a, a, a good? It's fun. I don't know. I didn't read that one. Um, <laughs> it is easily six figures, but well, with the opportunity yeah. to be potentially the largest disc golf contract and, ever. And that is what it said on Discraft's website. They didn't give obviously any specific numbers, but um, you said easily six figures with the potential of being the largest. And I'm assuming a lot of that is based on bonuses, incentives, disc sales. Yeah. I mean with the website too. So it's, it's, uh, it's hard to know what the website's going to bring in, how, um, you know, it's dependent on how my discs sell as well. So, um, yeah. So let's. You made, you made. I'll tell you what. You made at least fifty sales today. I know that. <laughs> two of them were. I know. Thank you so much for me. buying those discs. That's Dude. awesome. I saw your name. It's it's <laughs> really cool. I'm telling you, like, I literally have the password, and like John is teaching me how to like do everything in it, so like I can see who's on my website, when, where are they at, how long did they spend on the website. I saw that you purchased two discs. I did. And I like that. Um, yeah, it's really cool. And that also will help me with the fans too, because I can see like 
who's on there and I can reach out to them and be like, Hey, thank you so much. Like, you know, thank you. This is awesome. And I think that will just also go the extra mile. And yeah, I just, I really enjoy that aspect of like engaging with people. And so it's, it's really cool to be like so involved on every step because I feel that, you know, I have much, a lot more to talk about. Uh, I, I forgot where I, I no, I had something right, all lined I, up no, a moment I, ago. I have another. We'll we'll continue with this. So your uh your new disc, the it, it right now it's a test flight disc. Is there, is that what they called it? A uh, like anytime there's a prototype, a, like, it's a, just like a prototype. As you said, you were you were having some input on the way it flies. Is that going to be a specific Paige Pierce line of discs, similar to what we see with Paul being able to you know custom make them? Uh, name them right down to everything. Are you going to have that same type of input with a line of plastic? Um, yeah, this is my first um, one that I'm having uh, all input on plastic feel everything about it. Um, stamp what color the disc is going to be, you know, like I'm sure you saw them there swirly and they also have the jawbreaker look that all the disc discraft fans like. Um, but I like the swirl. So we kind of mesh those together. And also, you know, I'm, go I go back there and I'm like, how are they feeling today? Like, you know, do they, f did you get them a little flattered? You know, because, uh, it's just like, it's, we're so, I'm so involved and I can literally walk back to the machine and be like, ah, when I'm a little stiffer than that, also, can we try them in pink and blue tomorrow? You know, like literally down to everything about it. And so yeah, this is definitely my first creation with them, and who knows what the future has in store, how many of these we're going to do. And because I'm never going to throw the two that I ordered with your signature, they're going to go up on a wall. How do they fly? Dead straight. Dead straight. This And, and like, like, well, if you haven't heard, anyway. Um, so this is, I got the first ones on my doorstep about uh, five or six. No, I got here four days ago. So yeah, I got them the day before I got here. Um, and I, it was so silly. Bob is so crazy. He's so involved with the team, crazy in a good way, by the way, but he's so involved with the team and he just really is excited about everything. And that's, that's so nice. But I was coming here on Saturday night and he next day aired the putters to me on Friday. And I was like, don't do that. You're crazy. I'm going to be there in 36 hours. And he's like, yeah, but it's cold here. I want you to putt with them, like see how they feel in the warm heat. And, uh, and so I putted with them all day on Saturday. And then when I got here Saturday night, they ask, you know, what are your thoughts initially? And, you know, just saying like, oh, I want a little bit more glide. They're great from 35 and in, but I want to like know a little bit when I'm at a farther range, they're still going to continue the glide and, you know, stuff like that. Like it's a little too flippy. I want it to be straighter, straighter, straighter. <laughs> um, I want it to be straighter, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, so right now where we have them, uh, isn't the final run. And that's why they're called pest flights. Um, it's even a step before the prototype. Um, so, we may still tweak a couple things, but again, it, they just, the first ones were made on Saturday. So we are still testing them. We kind of want the disc golf community to test them as well. So hopefully not all of the 50 that we sold this morning are like you and that you're not going to putt with them because we really want everyone's feedback too. And uh, yeah, we're going to sell some more next Friday on 50 will be on my site signed just like those. Um, and there will be a bunch on Discraft site that say test flight and there's a stamp on Discraft.com right now that's kind of mocked up. So you'll see how they're going to look. Um, and then once those go out, I think a lot of people can kind of see what they think about it. And by that time, all of had enough time with them to realize, is this how I want it? Should we do a couple more final tweaks before the prototypes go out? Are you going to have any... Okay other signature discs 
I mean, you're a five-time yes. world champion. You're clearly, I mean, this is a, a specific disc for you. Are, is your name going to go on some of the current Discraft discs? Are you going to get a, uh, oh, I guess now is the perfect time to ask. Are we going to see a return of the Paige Pierce Stalker? You'll have to wait on that one. Ah! But there's an announced somewhere on Discraft.com. There's another announcement hidden on there. If you haven't seen it yet, you should maybe check that out. That's their first um, glimpse on my tour series disc. And then, yes, I'll be getting five signature discs right away. And then, you know, the opportunity to get more. And, yeah. So to follow that up regarding the tour series disc, that is – been a large part of contracts lately for uh, i'll say across so many of the manufacturers they're using an innova example for instance they have a signature series disc where uh avery jenkins is on the t-bird ricky wysocki on the uh, destroyer greg barsby so on and so forth and then over at uh discraft for instance we see paul making an actual line of the disc that he's helping shape and mold and design. And then you see the, the tour series discs as well, you know, the MJ Comet, so on and so forth. Does everything get broken down? Because a question we had for Paul a year ago that was talked about is, do those numbers, do those details get broken down for you as a player to know what is selling and the finances that correlate to them? Do you know how many of each disc will sell? And, and will the public ever know anything like that? I think that's another thing where it's different by manufacturer. When I was with Prodigy, that was not known. I actually asked quite a few times and was told that I couldn't have that information, even as an owner. I thought that was weird. Um, but with Dynamic, I was on a spreadsheet um, where they updated it monthly and that I could see those numbers myself. Um, and then with this craft, yes, I will know all of that. And I think all the players know that. And that's kind of, uh, that's another thing that's super awesome about this craft is that they have it all planned out. Like, okay, March, we're releasing a thousand April, we're releasing a thousand. And so you, as the player, even before you sign this contract, know how many to expect at the minimum. You know, if they sell more than that, then they're going to keep producing them. Um, so you already kind of know and you know as a player how, how much of that uh, profit that you will receive. So you can already kind of know, OK, my salary is this if you get salary plus these disc sales if you get disc sales. And then you yeah, you can already know what the minimum you're going to get is. How do you feel about players either on your team or for the general public? How do you feel about people knowing the details of, of our players' contracts, yourself included? How do you feel about that? If someone said, hey, here, here's Paige Pierce's contract and they posted it to Facebook tomorrow, how would that make you feel or how should the sport feel about it? I don't really know. I think that it's something where it's like kind of up to the player, you know, unless you're with a company that makes you sign an NDA, which means you can't disclose anything. Uh, but if you don't sign one of those, then it's really up to the player, you know, same thing as it is, you know, in an office setting, like does Sharon want to tell Bill what she gets? Maybe, but also maybe not. Um, yeah. I, as far as me personally, I think that it helps um, other players get better contracts, um, kind of comparing. And, and I think there's a lot more things than playing disc golf well that can give you a good contract. And so to see what the value is in each player and to know your value is very good for a player. Um, but maybe not for the manufacturer. They may they may hesitate there. Maybe not, but I think if they know the player's value and they believe it and they know that they can sell discs, I think it is still fine that the players are talking. 
Do yeah, it's not that so was my the, follow up. Oh, I was going to say not so much the players talking, but you can use those numbers. So you knew at uh, Dynamic how many discs you sold with your name on it, whether it's you know a hundred or twenty thousand. You can take that number to another manufacturer and say, "This is my value. I last year my my name sold this many discs, so I believe this is what I'm worth. This is what my value is to the company." And then the manufacturer can can assess that, and that also can they can also assess your value um, on yeah. their particular team. It's uh, I, I disagree. Very with difficult God. to th- that process was very difficult for me because. Um, and I think for a lot of players, besides players that are on Discraft, because like I said, on Discraft, they know how many they're going to produce. Mm-hmm. And with, you know, I think all companies, I can't really speak for Innova, but, you know, some of my friends are on Innova. And, you know, you hear things like, oh, they didn't put out my tour series until November or, oh, you know, you know, it went out of stock and who knows when they're going to restock it. Like, so you know, that they're missing all these opportunities of, you know, let's say two months where player X had a great couple runs and they're getting a lot of traffic and, uh, you know, promotion. And for those two months, their, their product isn't available that they're missing so many opportunities on sales there and, and marketing more importantly. Um, so, you know, it's kind of hard to track that. You know, especially when you're going to a company that is always going to have your disc in stock, no matter how many sell, and they are going to do as much as they can to help that product sell in their marketing. It's an interesting aspect I didn't even think about thinking having a regular allotment of discs with, we'll say, your name on them, you can track as a manufacturer, as a player, hey, look, you're right. I had a hot streak. I've won three events in a row. My disc sales have gone up. Oh, look, I'm, you know, I'm in, I'm on a cold bender and I've taken fifth place at the last three NTs. And look, I can clearly see my disc sales decline. That is a really interesting uh, dynamic to have with, uh, with the manufacturer and your, even maybe even your mentality, like thinking if if I don't play well, my discs aren't going to sell. I'm going to make even less money. Yeah, I mean, think about Adam Hammes, for example, like when he, you know, Joe Mus puts out a five and a half minute video of him hitting all these putts. How did those putters do, you know, right away? And um, that's something where I like to be involved and I love a challenge. And so one of these signature discs, I'm even contemplating getting one of the worst sellers and seeing, you know, and trying to prove that women can sell discs and that you know, I'm willing to put in the work and help you guys bring this product back to life. And also, you know, just show, show the world that it's a good product. It's just forgotten about because look at all these new discs that keep coming out. Well, and the only reason why I disagreed with some of this conversation was the fact that just by and large, there's putting your name on a disc and you just touched on it, putting your name on a disc that may not be a popular mold or a popular disc in general like it, it just might not do well, no matter whose name is on it. You know, we've seen that, you know, so that's why I have a hard time saying, well, you know, you could say, well, I sold X amount of discs with my name on it and I was or wasn't the direct reason for it. Some people just might not like the disc or it might not be as popular, uh, it, for instance. So uh, I just see it fly too, you know, like, you know, when you see Paul Macbeth on coverage throwing a certain disc and, and that video gets a hundred thousand views, like just seeing the way it flies too helps. So, you know, with all the marketing and with this craft being so involved with Jomez, um, you know, a lot more eyes are seeing these things. I'll, I'll follow that up. Jomez put out a, a great, you know, teaser piece with, uh, you're featuring pretty much your dad uh, a really nice, well put together piece, kind of like the profiled pieces we saw them do for all the other uh, MPO players at Worlds this year. Do you feel as if, uh, you know, Jomez, which does have this really powerful viewership, subscriber base, and following, do you feel that maybe you don't reap as many benefits because they're largely focused on on MPO as even, you know, the 2020 season announced? We're going to see them covering all the biggest events all on MPO. Does that, does that hinder you in any way? That's just tournaments. Okay. So that's a, that's a secret into something else. 
that was a part of the deal as well is that, you know, we, we are going to be partnering with Jomez on lots of videos, you know, and it's, yes, that's tournaments, but things that got, get the most views on Jomez are, are the profiles and they're the skins matches and stuff like that. So just also, again, how involved I am pitching ideas to both Jomez and the marketing team at Discraft and like, Hey, let's make a video of this. And we've already got quite a few ideas just in a matter of a day. So, um, yeah, uh, I think that you'll see more and more and more women's stuff on Jomez, even though that's not tournament stuff, at least for 2020. Okay. Now, uh, but maybe, and you know, this is, this is another thing. Like maybe you'll see me on some men's <clears throat> men's coverage. Maybe I'll play some MPO tournaments on occasion if Jomez is going to be there. Who knows? Okay. Okay. A little teaser out there. So one of the conversation pieces that w came up, I think, namely today was, how did that this initial conversation start with Discraft? I, I know there was talk about a phone call with Yuli. Maybe you could elaborate that on that. And then as it started, did did you also talk with Dynamic and and either offer you know an opportunity or a counter offer or anything of that nature? But how did the conversation start with Discraft and when? Um, yeah, it was with Yuli. Um, it was during U.S. Juniors. I was eating dinner and my phone rang and it was Yuli. And he never calls me. We're <laughs> great friends, but I've never talked to him on the phone, I don't think. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. And I'm like, you okay? <laughs> like, what's up? <laughs> and he asked if I had a minute. And I was just intrigued, really. And it was something where I hadn't even thought about at all. At You know, um, Worlds was coming up in a week and a half or so. And, uh, yeah, it just caught me off guard. But I was, yeah, I just was all ears and, and uh, listened to him brainstorm some ideas for quite a while. And uh, as soon as we got off the phone, I, I uh, couldn't stop thinking about it for like a couple hours. And I ended up just like taking notes and, and uh, writing a bunch of thoughts out and, you know, pros and cons of if I did it, you know, if the pros didn't severely outweigh the cons, I wasn't even going to entertain it. And, uh, you know, thought about it for quite a few weeks. Yuli follows up with me and um, asks if I have any questions or anything like that. And uh, yeah, he just like answered a bunch of questions that I had. And <clears throat> I, he told me that Jim Kenner um, was like, why don't we have Paige? Give her whatever she wants. Go get her. Like, what do you, what do you, why, why don't we have her? And uh, so that was cool to hear. And um, just like the, I think just how excited they were about me and what we could do together. That was like really what set the tone. And then just how any idea I had was, yeah, let's, let's make it happen. And within a day or two, it was like, okay, yes, we can do that. Here's how we could do it. Blah, 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 blah. You know, think it over, but it wasn't like we're going to, it was like, if this is this decision you do want to make, yes, we can do that. And, uh, you know, every day it seemed more and more, um, enticing and, and, uh, that pros list was through the roof. Did, did you bring any of that? I, I gotta ask, did you bring any of that, those concerns or possible situations back to dynamic and feel like, Hey, you know, maybe they could match or even step up their offers or game. Did you have any of that conversation? Of course we were in communication. I mean that, like I said, that was a week and a half before worlds. I was super focused on worlds. I, I took those notes down and just to get them out of my brain and onto a paper and, um, tried not to think about them at least till after worlds, because that's like my pinnacle of, of the year. And, um, so yeah, after Worlds, um, Dee Dee reached out to me. I mean, they were there, you know that. And um, yeah, they they uh, reached out via email on just a couple like business things. And I just responded to the email and said, you know, please 
do not move forward with anything. I have a few things I want to talk to you guys about and think about before I feel comfortable with you proceeding on anything. And uh, they said, okay, can we at least start, you know, thinking about a signature disc for five time? You know, it takes a while um, to get it made and to ship it from Sweden. So can we at least get an idea of what, of a disc? And I said, well, if I stay, I would love to talk about bringing the uh, getting a lucid X suspect. And I said, but again, please don't move forward on anything. We do need to have a couple conversations, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, yeah, next thing I knew I had lucid X suspects shipped to me during us women's. And, um, I sent an email as soon as I got them and just said, you know, these look and feel great, but, or I'm sorry that they look and they fly great, but they don't feel how I want them to. These don't feel like lucid X. They're kind of soft and the lucid X is really stiff. Like, can we do this? And can we do this? And I was informed to that, that they were already made and being stamped. And I was just like, Oh no, this is bad. Um, because in the meantime, between that world's email and us women's, I was in communication with Eric McCabe and Robert McCall, um, and Rusco, um, probably 10 to 15 times expressing my, my, uh, concerns basically, and my desires and stuff. And I was very honest, even giving them percentages of like, okay, I'm 60%, you know, contemplating this other offer. I'm okay. I'm 80%, you know, please don't move forward with this disc. Like I don't want to, for a lack of a better word, screw you over. If I leave, please don't move forward. Please don't move forward. I'm 80% out the door. And they were already made and they wanted to drop them anyway. And, you know, that's, that decision is theirs. You know, they're the company, they, they're marketing everything, their decisions. So I don't know what I would have done if I was a, a business owner and I heard that that person wanted to 80% leave and to don't put your name on a disc. Um, I thought that I was doing the right thing by being honest and saying, please don't, I'm probably leaving. And yeah, they had that entire time to send me an offer or, you know, communicate with me, um, what they wanted to do, what they didn't want to do. And, uh, it was just kind of like crickets for quite a while. Meanwhile, Discraft is like, okay, and we can do this and we can do this and we can do this. And it was just, uh, crickets from one end and, and, uh, just nothing but excitement and um, opportunities from the other end. So every day the decision was more and more clear. But you, as I say, you have a really strong support group on the road. I, every time we see you, you're with Alyssa or Nate, uh, Zoe, Dustin. How much did you bounce off of them? How much did you talk to them about this? Because they're on, uh, I mean, well, Nate specifically is a disc mania sponsored player. So he probably has a slightly different view from another manufacturer than, than even you from your previous manufacturers. What type of input did you get? Um, just that I should stop thinking about what others are going to think and do what I need to do for myself. And, you know, the entire reason I even started to have these, uh, thoughts on, maybe I should pursue another option was because I'm going to rewind just a minute. I'll get back to the point promise. Um, so after Ricky won worlds in his second world title, Sorry. he was still with, uh, latitude. Um, they made him a bunch of shirts that said like Ricky Wysocki, Raptor legs, whatever the shirt said. And uh, every time I went into the shop in Emporia, there was this whole section of Ricky Wysocki gear. And every time I went there, I said, when are we going to make shirts? 
this is what I want the shirts to look like. This is what I want the hats to look like. I'll get online, I'll order them, I'll do all this, um, but let's get the shirts. And it was always a no, 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 no. The shirts don't sell. Players' things don't sell. They don't sell. Um, you know, Eric McCabe has a Ranger bag. Let's put my name on a Ranger bag. And no, that we tried that, didn't work. Well, I feel everything I'm involved in, I promote. Um, and that's because I only do things that I truly believe in. You know, I'm never going to be sponsored by Coca-Cola because I don't drink soda. Um, you know, so I want products and partnerships that I truly believe in. And so I know that when I partner with this craft, I'm going to boost them. I'm going to boost them because it's truly how excited I am. And I just, that didn't resonate well with me that, you know, oh, that didn't work. So we're not going to try it, but I'm not Ricky and I'm not going to make these shirts with like a T-Rex on them. Like I want to do limited runs and see if people like them. If they don't, let's do something else that, that people will like and just try to engage with people. And so, and that's kind of what I mean by my, my trust and my vision. Um, you know, they didn't trust me to promote the product, to put my name on the product, to sell the product. Um, and I was even willing to do all the work, you know, I just wanted this chance. So I ended up making my own shirts, paying for them, um, shipping them out, marketing them, sold through six different, um, uh, Designs style and, yeah, iterations. Yeah. Yep. yeah so. Hoodies, long sleeves, t-shirts, all of them. And just to, to, to take the step first and to be like, look, they do sell. I sold all these. And it was just on Instagram. Like imagine if we had them in the shop and we had Bobby and Danny and all these people marketing them, like we could do big things. And it was always a no. And, um, it just really frustrated me. And I made that very clear. And, um, yeah, they started to tell me that I couldn't wear other gear and, uh, I couldn't wear whale sacks hats or Alyssa Van Lannan hats and that I couldn't wear Paige Pierce hats. And, uh, it was just very limiting. And with this craft, it sky is the limit Wear whatever you want the discraft doesn't even have to be a giant logo. It can be this small. We just want to see a discraft and they want me to grow my brand and they want to push me in that direction. Do you think that's more of a, a future for our sport is maybe the manufacturers while that you're on a team and you're sponsored by them, but to begin to brand a player as opposed to it used to be when, you know, Again, old, we're old. When we were younger, it was Team Innova versus Team Discraft. And you yeah. probably even remember some of that. But now we're starting to see where players are, are getting much more of a following than manufacturers. Do you, do you see that as a future Discraft is embracing? I do, totally. And um, I think I'm allowed to talk about this because we already sneaked it. You are now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but like, so this year... I mean, this is just one example. And, and like I was talking about, like they have a new vision and they realize that the player is what they should be uh, promoting. Um, so last year on the four series discs, they were bottom stamped, letting the disc do the blunt of the marketing because the discs are so gorgeous. I mean, everybody was looking at them. It didn't matter if you were on Team Innova, Team DD, whatever. Anytime you saw a Discraft boost set up, you were like, holy cow, look at this thing. Um, with the player's name on the bottom of the disc. And this year, the tour series disc, big player's name, boom. It's like about the player. They're trying to make it more about the player and hiring more marketing people. And to, they hired a new marketing guy specifically just to market the team. So, you know, they're still going to have all the marketing that they've been doing in Ultimate and in um, disc golf as a whole and on their own channels, but then another guy that's specifically doing team stuff. So, you know, they are seeing that that is important and that's where disc golf is headed and they want to follow that. 
Well, so what oh, I wanted to lead, quickly. Really, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying lead that, not follow that. Uh, what I was going to touch on quickly, and of course it was even more recent today with your announcement about talking to Paul Ulibari, in other professional sports, whether it's legally or it's just, we'll say, gentlemanly or, or uh, a friendly situation, contracts and those conversations are kind of reserved either for a certain time of year or they're entirely off limits in some cases. Do, does, do you feel that the conversation you had with Yuli, could you understand how someone might be upset about that, whether you're pro Yuli or anti Yuli or pro page or discraft or not? Do you, does, does any of that resonate with you at all? The fact that he called you the way he did? Like in a negative light, do I like? Yeah. Do I understand? Could you how understand someone... how somebody? There's some people openly have just said, "Yeah, that that." In in other words, that wasn't cool in so many words, or that shouldn't um, be allowed, or you I, know, just to address was... that side of the professional sports side that we're kind of creeping to. Right, and honestly, I've talked to Yuli again uh -huh. since then, uh -huh. and Bob, the team manager, and both of them said, you know, I didn't even realize that we were talking about 2020, you know, we were just kind of trying to plant the seed and to have you like, keep it in the back of your mind. And then kind of finding out that I'm not under a contract and, you know, maybe this could happen sooner than we even think. <clears throat> okay. Um, I, I know that was just one piece of the conversation that was held out there today. See that for sure. I could see that, but I don't think it's like it was malicious in any way. So and if you know Yuli and or Bob, like, you know that they both mean well and aren't trying to, like, poach, you know, like, it, it's more so just like, hey, we see that you have a lot of value. We would love to work with you in the future. Um, these are some of the things that we are thinking we want to implement. And, you know, you're the player that we see partnering with in this way. We saw this transition uh, again, I, and I know I mentioned uh, Val, obviously a big acquisition and, and creating kind of this m movement and this conversation about FPO centric. Again, FPO makes up roughly 10% or less of the disc golf population. What do you see Discraft doing aside from just supporting you personally? What are some of the things that you guys have talked about to help grow the women's game? in the FPO fields or, yeah. or amateur fields for that matter? Well, first of all, like one of Bob, this one was Bob's idea and I really, really, really love this. And so I, and it was just like a brief little snippet in a conversation. And I was like, yes, we're doing that. Let's run with it. Um, so he says, you know, they were at worlds, for example, they go to a lot of tournaments. They sponsor almost all of the disc golf pro tours. So they go to all those ones. Um, but his example was worlds and, uh, actually thought we had a big gallery at worlds. So it was still cool to hear him say this, but at worlds, they followed the women and then they followed the men. And he said, it was just crazy how much fewer, how many fewer fans that you guys had following and that they want to find a way to grow the women's gallery. And he said, you know, I, I wouldn't want to interrupt you before your round while you're warming up or like during your round. But what do you think about doing some kind of thing where after the round, there's like a, a an area, maybe we get pizza, we get some sodas, we get some beers, whatever the people want. We'll figure that out. But just an area where fans can come and you go to that area for say 30 minutes after your round and you just are in this little area with them just talking signing autographs um you know taking pictures just doing a q a little impromptu like tips and uh just really just interacting whatever that person wants to talk about if you just want a photo and you want to get out of here or if you want to you know pick my brain about mental game, like whatever it may be. And I mean, I said that I pretty much do that, but there's not a designated area, you know, I'm always at the course and willing to talk to whoever, but 
it was a cool idea to, if we see them in the gallery, give them a little token of some sort. And we actually ordered them today. They're like little bracelets that say um, Discraft and Paige Pierce powwow on them. And um, so if I see you watching the round, we'll give you this bracelet. And at the end of the round, there's going to be like a little area where we're just going to have like a little hangout basically. And uh, to try to like encourage more people to come watch, watch the disc uh, us play disc golf, because I think the women's side is so entertaining. And always I'm getting these messages about like, Hey, I watched that tournament. It was so cool. I love watching the women's game more so than the men's. It's uh, more obtainable and, I, you know, it's similar to my skill set. So, you know, hearing stuff like that all the time about people online, um, but then at the tournaments, not having quite as big of a, of a gallery. So just like ideas like this are stemming um, every day. And uh, yeah, just trying, trying whatever and what, whatever we think of to, to try to grow women's disc golf. I mean, we're talking about doing more women centric uh, videos with Jomez, you know, now me, Haley and Vanessa are on the same team and, and uh, you know, thinking of a video we can do with us three with Jomez and maybe even a disc craft doubles, like stuff like that. Um, but yeah, just honestly, we're just full of ideas and eager to, try to implement them and, and, uh, just try things. Now, I think this is a fair question to ask. I'll say you're, you're excited. You're through the roof, literally almost a thousand people watching live, all this other stuff. How do you and the company sustain this honeymoon stage? I mean, everyone's excited. You, you should be, of course, a few of maybe non-discraft fans aren't excited or the few non page fans that are out there might not be excited, but most people are. How do you sustain that? How do you keep things moving forward so that you're not second guessing yourself in two or four or nine years? As you just right. said, you, you want this to be your last move. How, how do you keep that up? Well, I mean, it's, it's like, essentially I'm building this, you know, with their help. We're side by side building this up and it's, of course, you're always excited about what you're doing. Aren't you excited about Smashbox? You know, so it's like, it's my project. It's my baby. And, uh, you know, forming my own putter that I get to name, pick out everything. Like, of course, I, I want to throw that putter until I die. And, you know, like the deputy, I love the deputy, but I didn't create it, you know. And there was some things that I would tweak about it, you know. I've, I've had putters that fly great and I've had putters that feel great, but I've never had them together, let alone been able to name it and create it, let alone create this website, let alone create this beautiful video with my dad. And, you know, we had this entire other, um, plot to this video and I was like, I want my dad involved let's, you know, let's get my dad involved. Let's make it raw and emotional. And, you know, this three days long of meeting and planning and planning, they were like, all right, if that's what you think, you know, your fans better than we do run with it. It sounds awesome. It sounds really cool. Go ahead, do it, try it. Uh, you know, we trust, we trust you. And you know, I think it's it's the best disc golf video I've ever seen. Maybe I'm biased, but I think it's uh, pretty timeless. You know, it's something where you can watch that again 10 years from now and it's still motivational. It's not just, uh, you know, this. It's not like a commercial, you know, it's like a mini movie. I, I have to ask because you keep bringing up naming the disc. Do you have a name set yet? Give us the, the exclusive page. No, I um, I don't want to touch on that too much because we have a video releasing yeah. next Wednesday about it. Yeah. Um, but I do have a few names that we're kind of throwing around. Um, do you have a theme? Also, like, like everybody seems to want to have a theme with their discs. It used to be Discraft was a lot of uh, like astrological stuff. Innova had a lot of animal <laughs> stuff. Uh, uh, DD has obviously the justice, the, the justice system. system. Do you have like a yeah. theme that you're going to work with? 
Um, well, it's kind of hard because also in this like process, like no matter what we're doing, if we're like eating lunch or playing darts or, you know, stamping discs, um, a word will come to mind and I'll be like, Oh, and say it. And we just kind of, uh, like toy with it. And I would say like a solid 80% of, uh, the names I've said, Mike will be like, Oh, taken. And I'm like, really? Who the, you know, what? I've never heard of this name before. So it's that part's a little tricky too. Um, there's so many discs out, but that was a thought that we brought up yesterday too. Like, you know, this is the first one, but definitely not the last one. So do we want them to, do we want a theme, you know, so that they all kind of blend, but I know that no matter what I want it to mean something to me. Um, I love the buzz, but a B doesn't have any meaning for me. And, you know, I want everything I do to have like a purpose for me and to have meaning. And yeah, so that part, that's the first thought. And then hopefully it aligns with, you know, a similar uh, theme in the future. With all of this that you're doing and working on, plenty of people are wondering, will this impact your tour schedule does 2020 look wildly different for any reason in terms of number of events or the events you go to how does 2020 just generically look i don't need you to read me all 52 of your weekends but how does it look for you it'll be pretty similar to last year i'll play all the majors and nts and pro tours um probably there might be one or two that i won't play but for the most part all the majors pro tours nts um those are the ones that I feel most, uh, fire at, um, you know, the, the prestige is so high and it just like gets my, uh, competitive spirit, um, ignited, um, ignite. <laughs> there you mm. go. Would, <laughs> oh, I, oh. so um, I, speaking, of, um, speaking I, oh, go ahead. I will be going like last year I did the same thing, just bowling green and, uh, junior worlds. I'll definitely be going to those again. Um, but I didn't go to am worlds last year. I might go to am worlds this year too. Um, and yeah, I think I want going to leave some weeks open just to conserve my body for one and, and train off the course and, uh, you know, do some more promotional events and stuff like that. Two part question. Last year we asked Paul this question about how long can we give you to learn your, your new plastic, like before we expect to see you be the page pierce that we've, that we know and love. Well, um, I feel pretty comfortable already. And, and I think I'm more excited than I've been in a while. And, um, I like to learn things. I like to be challenged and, having new discs in front of me, it's exciting. And also because if I don't like, you know, if I love the way this one feels, but it's just a little too flippy, I'll take it to Mike and be like, Hey, let's make something that's like this. And, you know, so it's also like learning every mold. And if there's a gap, we can create it. If there's, you know, uh, man, this one would be cool, but in this plastic, we can do that. Uh, like seriously, the sky's the limit and they are on board for my ideas. So, I mean, there's so much excitement just to learn every disc because of my partnership with them that I think I'm going to learn the discs so well, so quick, just because of the excitement factor. And, uh, I can't wait. I think I'm going to be playing a lot of cash rounds this off season because <laughs> that's something that I, uh, I feel like the best practice is in a tournament and like the beginning of last year, I hadn't played a tournament for, you know, months and I think it showed. So just like keeping that competitive excitement going, I hope, hope that you'll see Paige Pierce right away. The, and that, that kind of leads right into my second question. <laughs> You'll have to forgive me because these years blend in together. I think it was this past year you had a slow start to the season. I think you yourself had said, yeah, maybe I didn't put in the work in the off season that I should have, and it took me a little while to warm up. Is that something we can expect, regardless of whether you know the discs? You have a lot of other things on your plate now with Disc Golf Tourist, 
and a lot of your other ventures. How's that practice going to be in the off season? Oh, I mean, I've been practicing harder than I think I ever have. Um, just the motivation of like seeing when I hit that switch, seeing how much uh, better my scores were translating. I know that seems like a shocker, but um, you know, I've been doing it for so long. Sometimes it's like, I don't want to work. I just got off work, you know? And uh, yeah, just like I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy the competitive nature. So sometimes practice just seems so boring. Um, so just finding better ways to practice and ways that are challenging me and making me learn. And uh, yeah, definitely not a thing that that will continue again this year. It just was kind of a lack of motivation. And that motivation is at an all time high right now. So yeah, and like I said, I, I, I'm excited to see how you continue to challenge yourself to keep that up, you know, and that's what the greats do is they find a way to dig deep even after success. You've clearly been yeah. successful a number of times, but keeping that going is, is I, I think, always uh, one of the biggest challenges that's in front of you. Uh, van, RV life, uh, you know, uh, uh, one more detail to wrap up there. Do you see that de changing? New wrap on the yeah. van. Will you get a bigger RV instead? What What's the plan? Yeah, the I think I'm sticking with the van for one more year. I actually did go look at some RVs, um, small ones, but I just love getting off grid. I don't want to plug in, um, and I like you know the size of it. It drives like a car and everything, but it's big enough to live in. And uh, yeah, I toyed toyed around with the idea of an RV just for actually for two reasons. One was like shower and bathroom, it's nice to wake up and have a toilet, you know, <laughs> as opposed to being in the van, you have to, you wake up, you got to pee super bad and you just got to like race to a gas station and just run to the bathroom. <laughs> they always look at you like you're crazy, by the way, <laughs> if you were wondering. Um, but also we were talking about like, maybe, maybe I should upgrade and get a little pull behind trailer and convert the trailer out to like where we would do that page Pierce powwow and like have some, have a TV in there playing the live coverage if it's hot or if it's raining and I don't know, stuff like that. Just ideas rolling around. What, what is the best of everything? Okay. Cause we, we want to accomplish it. Well, we're going to start to wrap things up, but I, I, I would love and take it where you will. I would love for you to share any thoughts with, and address fans, supporters, previous manufacturers. You've been on this long journey. I, I know you're you're so tied to, like you said, the, the fans and the supporters and the manufacturers. What is something you'd like to share as you're about to begin this new journey with this new manufacturer? What would you like to share? Uh, I, I don't want to call it a parting shot, but anything you'd like to address to everyone else out there that's supported you all along this uh, journey? I mean, that's, that's something that I do want to talk about. Like you, like you just said, it's not a parting. Um, it's really not. Um, uh, next time I see Resco, I'm going to hug him. It's just, and next time I see anybody that says DD on their shirt, I'm not going to walk the other direction. We're just wearing a different logo. It's very simple. And, you know, I see a lot of comments on my Instagram or, or wherever it may be, um, saying like, Oh, I'm so sad, but really there's nothing sad. Like if you love those discs, keep throwing them. You know, if you love me, keep supporting me. It's, there's nothing sad, you know, it's, it was a mutually decided decision and we are both going to find success in our future endeavors and there's nothing sad about it. You know, they just signed Chris Clemens and I'm sure they got some other exciting news coming up and there's excitement on this side as well. So, you know, it's more so just uh, finding the partnership that works for you. It's not that Didi did something bad. It's more so that our visions weren't aligned. And there's things that I wanted that they couldn't make happen and vice versa. They wanted stuff from me that I couldn't make happen. And, you know, we just decided that this was best, the best way to go. And I think everybody's happy. So no reason for anybody to be sad. You know, I'll still sign. And it's kind of funny. This always happens. You know, 
oh, can you sign my destroyer? I know you're not on Team Innova or, you know, stuff like that. It's like, I don't care what I'm signing. If you want something from me, just ask me. If I can make it happen, I gladly will. So, yeah, just, uh, I, I, in my opinion, nothing really has changed as far as uh, the fans go. Um, if they have to you, message me. Send me a message. What, what do you want to know? Let's talk about it. And, uh, you know, let's, let's just continue to grow as a community. And I think that this is the biggest step I've ever taken and hopefully will revolutionize the way women are treated in our sport. Is there any stone unturned? Is there any fallacy or myth or, or saying or anything out yeah. there that we didn't touch on that I want to give you just a, an open invite to address? Is there anything that, I don't really know what you mean. You're uh, not you're not secretly Ken Climo's daughter, correct? I've seen that on the internet. Just because our ears stick out a little bit, like <laughs> okay, people I, are so funny. Like I just wanted I'm to put that to that bed. I find so much enjoyment in making fun of me. Like yeah. keep it coming. You're just boosting my Instagram views. So <laughs> yeah, hey, newsflash. I'm overweight, people. I so if you guys want to post that on the internet, it's out there too. So it's so, pull that. People think the champ's my dad, though. That's, that's so. No, what I meant was, th I want to give you, you know, as we just about closed up here, I just want to give you uh, a moment to address anything that you don't that you feel like maybe we missed or glossed over or didn't talk about or oh yeah, I saw this and I absolutely want to address this. Is there anything left out there? So when someone you know is reading or tomorrow is like, oh, I really wish you know she would have addressed this. Is there anything for you that you feel like we didn't touch on? I can't see the comments or anything, so I don't sure. really know if we skipped anything over. But um, let's see. Uh, the, I mean, I guess the other negative thing that I see is, you know, that Dee Dee was a family and like, oh, you know, it's so sad. Dee Dee was a family. And I don't think that that ever um, mattered to any of us, you know, like we're all a family regardless of the logo. It's not like DD is a family. It's like, we all are similar people. We, you know, at DD, we had game nights and the staff came, you know, it's like everyone's friends because we spend so much time together and we're growing together. And, you know, that's happening here as well. And, uh, yeah, I think team Innova is a family, you know, at all of them are families. Um, maybe they're just not marketing that. So, you know, that's something I, I hope to show you guys about Discraft too. I mean, literally, like I said, Jim Kenner gave the company to his nephew. His daughter works on the heat stamping line. Bob, his wife is the shipping woman. Her brother works here. Bob's sister works here. And the average time, this is fascinating stuff to me, sorry, because when I walked in, let me pause that thought. When I walked into the warehouse, I thought I was going to go shake a bunch of new people's hands. And like, I would say 50 to 60% of the people I knew from when I was on the team in 2011. And I was like, wow, he's still here. He's still here. She's still here. Um, and they just started like saying a couple of these things to me that I thought were super fascinating. Like the average length of an employee at Discraft is 13 years on average. They have people that have worked here for 30 plus years, like lots of them. And um, what was the other one? Oh, that over half of their employees are women. So it's really cool to see like those things. And yeah, I just thought that was cool to share because they don't like to market themselves like that. But I think it's truly cool when I walk in and I see so many women in this office. It's really cool. Uh, that is great. And that talks about company culture and that family like environment. And, uh, you know, I use the hashtag Frisbee family all the time. I think at the end of the day, we're all a bunch we're of very impassioned people. Community. What's that? Mike, the whole community is family. Like you can literally post on your Facebook, like, Hey, I need a plumber. Like any disc golfers can help me out. Like, you know, that's, that's, that is disc golf. So yeah, it, it is. It's Actually, incredible. So you think, is this going to be, are these words like straight on for yep, you guys? Yeah, we can read They're it. Great. Looks like Discraft sponsors you. Yes. <laughs> one second, one second. I want to okay. show you guys something. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Here comes the exclusive, exclusive, as we're about to close things out with Paige. 
I know okay, that they've so, been there working on a few things for the last few days. So Paige has got something else. Actually, this is actually really old. And uh, second time I cried today, actually, once when I watched that video this morning. But um, so I was actually, Discarp was actually my first sponsor. Yep. And I won my first world title with them. But they signed me before, and I guess we get to stop using the word sign, but I got on the team before I won that world title. And this is, uh, the first disc that they made with my face on it. And I signed it and wrote it to Mike in 2011. And he just showed it to me again today. And I thought it was super awesome. Whoops. Other way. Yeah, no, no that's, that's perfect. perfect. Uh, read it to us, please though. You're well, I just put Mike's name on it. And I said, thank you for believing in me and supporting me before I was a world champion. And he just like gave it to me just a little bit ago and said, we've come a long way, kid. <laughs> so I thought that was super cool. And um, yeah, I'm just excited for the next chapter. Well, we are as well, Paige. It's, I, it, it's been such an honor to be along your side for so many years i was there for your first world title i have that same disc they were a limited run i immediately purchased one i still have it in storage as well and to see you grow as a person as an ambassador as a sponsored player uh, as a traveler all around the world spreading the good news and the and the gospel of disc golf as you have and you've impacted so many lives you've you've inspired both adults and children and that's obvious on both even the men's and the women's side. And that becomes obvious every single time anything of you is posted in video or in written format. It's, it's just been truly incredible. So I hope that, you know, that this decision, you know, even the people that don't necessarily love it right away, I hope I can shed some light on, on some things that maybe may change your opinion or also just resonate with people that, Sometimes you have to make uncomfortable decisions, decisions that aren't popular, decisions that, you know, could impact you more so than you think. But, you know, you're never going to do something good without making waves. And I think that this is exactly what's going to happen. I think that the power is in your hands, every human, you know, you, you might do something that's going to upset somebody, but if it's best for you, just do it. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't speak, say it any better, so I won't. So, Paige, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Can I one shameless plug. Please. Thanks, Terror Bear. Um, yeah. So yesterday, Grip emailed me. I know I just shared this, but seriously, it's so awesome, so 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 awesome. Grip emailed me and said they want to donate to the disc golf tourist trip. So everybody that's going on the disc golf tourist trip is now getting a bag and uh, there are still four spots available. So if you guys want to go on a vacation, you have some vacation time this year still, look at discgolftourist.com and see if it appeals to you. I just checked tickets this morning and they're give or take $500 from the US if you go on skyscanner.com. So pretty cheap and the value just increased because of this $200 bag. So it's pretty exciting. And I can't wait to get to Croatia. We're actually going to four countries this year. So I'm super excited to get over there and do some clinics and play my first tournament of the year with some disc craft discs. Awesome. Well, you, you don't need me to go off on another podcast about how amazing Croatia is. That's another day. So did you talk about it? <laughs> yes, he did. I see that did. episode. <laughs> I'm Paige. sure Maya loved it. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see her soon. And I'll send you a selfie or something. Please do. Well, again, thank you. Have a great weekend. We wish you nothing but success. We wish everything you're involved with nothing but success. Thank you to Discraft and everyone else involved here. And uh, we look forward to hearing more. And, and you know, you have an open line on the show anytime you need it, even if it's an exclusive middle of the day, Friday afternoon interview. We're, we'll make our time. We're here for you. Thanks, Terry. All right. Take care. Also, how cute is my dad? I just love him. He's so cute. And if everyone wants to see the reason why Discraft signed Paige Pierce, you can check out our highlight series that we're doing. Paige was the number was one so cool. player 
that I chose to do the highlight for. I did it. I did it. Johnny I did, did it. Not work. Terry. Yeah, yeah. Johnny did that work. <laughs> um, so cool. Yeah. Seriously, I I loved watching that. But I wish there was more like drives. Maybe I got to get better at driving. It was pretty much 11 minutes of me putting. Keep it in bounds. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> on that note. <laughs> we love you, right. Paige. Thank Bye, you. Bye, guys. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye. Yeah, you can check that out on our YouTube page. Uh, next week, Paul, the week after that, bad breaks, bad shots. So if you ever wanted to watch about 10 to 15 minutes of pros just having some bad days, including Paige Pierce, yep. um, there are some shots on there that will make you laugh. Um, but yes, so thanks a lot to Paige for joining the show. Of course. Uh, of course, thank you to Paige for joining us, like we just said, and Discraft uh, getting a, a few of the logistics set up over there. Paige was very gracious to do so. We are glad to do so at Smashbox. I, I I hope you guys know and realize and understand that we want to promote all of our FPO side as much as we possibly can. I, I feel like we've put that out there, and we will continue to do so. And uh, I, I only see good things coming as a result of Paige, more involvement, and more uh, just development on the entire FPO side. And I know this. maybe this goes without saying. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, some of the stuff we heard from Paige is clearly her point of view. I mean, we've... Uh, Everybody, every story has two sides, whether it's her, uh, her moves with Prodigy, her moves with Dynamic Disc. I I'm, I'm sure there is, if you were to ask someone on the other side, you might get a slightly different version of what happened. Sure. But I just want to put that out there. I, I don't think anybody is lying to us ever, I, but everybody always has their own perspective on things. And I, I think that's important to, to point out sometimes. Yeah, I think. Uh, exactly that, how you and I experience the exact same situation, even when we talk about it afterwards, may go down a little differently. Uh, it, it is great to get uh, Paige's entire perspective. Well, She's had this history, almost. Yeah, this history and this career. And uh, yeah, I we appreciate that she's willing to share with us everything that she's gone through uh, from her perspective. And, uh, and, and I, I, I meant to say it as we open the interview, as we're about to close out. Not only are we friends with her and consider her a good friend, we work with Dynamic Dis and consider them friends. We work with Discraft and consider them friends. We work with Innova and consider them friends and Prodigy, all of them. We have friends, so we have that business and personal relationship, even to the point where I was sponsored by Innova and Discraft back in more of my playing days and years legacy. ago. Yes, and Legacy uh, all back years ago. So we always are trying to wade through all of those relationships and sometimes those touchy subjects as best as we can. But that's also part of the beauty of, I think, our overall community mm -hmm. is we kind of blur those lines. And, and I think that's what makes it so great. Or it makes us not have a life, <laughs> one or the other. So we're going to sign off. We, we cannot say enough. Thank you to anyone that super chatted today, including I saw Dan just jumped on it. Thank you, Dan Harbeck. Thank you to all of you. Thank you guys for, for trusting us and coming here on a Friday afternoon to bring you what we feel like was a very uh, raw and powerful conversation with Paige. We hope that it answered almost every question you could have asked that, you know, you were dying to know, uh, again, getting it from her perspective. And uh, we wish you all a good weekend. And we, of course, will be with you again Tuesday night. Yep. We'll make sure to release this as well as an audio podcast probably tomorrow or the next day it'll go out just so everybody has it exactly so you it'll be great references and i'm sure other people are writing articles as we speak so for johnny v terry miller the disc golf guy uh one of the biggest uh, fan clubs of Paige pierce is right here in this basement we forever will be we wish her the best of luck and success wherever life takes her in this crazy disc golf world we appreciate it and again we love all of you smashies out there thank you for joining us we'll see you tuesday night when you step inside the smash box